good evening, folks. Welcome once again to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study and prayer. Uh, as we study prayer themes throughout the books of the Old Testament, and in a few weeks we'll be in the New Testament. Beginning on September the 16th, we will actually be back um, in church for our Wednesday night study. Uh, we still plan to um, pre-record or record uh, the Bible study, and so we will continue to put our Bible study online. It may look a little different, may sound a little different, but uh, we'll still try to get that Bible study uh, online for you uh, if you're not able to attend uh, in person. And again, that begins on September the 16th. Well, let's begin with prayer tonight as we uh, discover from Ezekiel and Daniel uh, these prayer themes from the Old Testament. Father, I do pray that you would lead us tonight to draw close to you in prayer. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. So beginning tonight with Ezekiel. Ezekiel, again, was another prophet in the Old Testament that had several challenges. Uh, people, uh, the people of God, um, turned their hearts away from God. They followed after other gods. They had idols in their heart that led them away from God. And so the prayer uh, theme, if you will, is that God warns that sin hinders prayer. If there are things in our lives that we are considering more important to God, of course, then um, we're going to neglect prayer and we're, we're going to less likely uh, hear from God. In Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 3, we read this, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put them and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? What God is expressing to Ezekiel, as he expressed to Jeremiah, he even told Jeremiah, don't even pray for these people because they're not going to listen. But for Ezekiel, God flatly told Ezekiel that he will not hear their prayer because they're in sin. They were offering up prayers flippantly unto the Lord. They were um, using lofty words or repetitions that meant nothing because they were not even willing to turn toward God. And so as we see God telling Ezekiel, we see this again in chapter 8, verse 18, Therefore I will act in fury, God says. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. I wonder tonight if we've ever experienced that from the Lord, that we offer up prayers to God and it seems like God is not listening. Now, of course, we've covered through our prayer themes that God does answer all of our prayers. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, sometimes it's wait. But it is true. Other times, if we are trying to pray and we have unconfessed sin, if we are praying flippantly unto the Lord, if we are just casual in our prayers, if we are prideful in our prayers, just expecting God to turn his ear anytime we want to speak to him and expect God to do exactly what we want, of course we're going to miss out on what God is really doing in our lives. And so I do want to cover just real quick when it seems that God does not answer prayer, there's this check system that I believe that we need to check in and of ourselves. First of all, is there unconfessed sin in my life? Now, I don't know about you, but when I pray each and every day, one of my first prayers or one of my first thoughts is, God is there any sin in my life that I have not confessed. In fact, I ask God to expose areas in my life. And so if there's something that, that has crept into my life, if there's a thought, um, 
if I acted inappropriately, if I said something um, that that um, could have could have been mistaken as um, uh, being haughty or arrogant, um, I want to be very sensitive to the Lord and ask the Lord to expose those areas in my life so that I can confess those right away. And of course, if I do something that I know is wrong, I want to confess that right away. Sin hinders our prayers. It hinders us from hearing the Lord. And so that's the first check system. Is there any sin in my life that I have not yet confessed to the Lord? Secondly, how is my spiritual journey going? What does it look like in terms of my devotion to the Lord as I study God's Word, as I draw near to God? So, secondly, is there spiritual neglect under the Lord? Has my Christian life just become this, this casual approach to everything? Or do I seriously approach God in prayer and in study daily? It is a continual process in which we approach God. And so that's a second check. Am I serious about my spiritual journey? Have I taken up my cross? Am I denying myself? Am I following closely to the Lord? Another check is pride. Pride hinders our prayers. Now, sometimes it's difficult to uh, even... Um, see pride in our lives because of pride. I do pray, though, that we are very serious about recognizing when we are prideful. You know, it's easy to see it in other people, isn't it? It's easy to see how people act unto the Lord, and we might even say in ourselves, well, that person is not going to uh, be in touch with the Lord because of their pride. Well, I pray that we would look in the mirror from time to time and make that as a check system. And of course, that's also a, uh, an area of sin that creeps into our lives, that area of pride. And then, of course, prayerlessness is another check. I think too often, as I mentioned uh, earlier, sometimes our circumstances um, dictate our prayer life. So, for example, if we are going through a difficult time, of course, then we're going to pray. If we're not going through a difficult time, if, if life seems to be going okay, unfortunately, we neglect our prayer. Unfortunately, we neglect our time with the Lord. And so prayerlessness does hinder our prayers. It, it hinders our closeness to the Lord. And then a fifth check, if you will, Sometimes we just simply misunderstand what's going on in our lives. I think many people sometimes view if something bad happens, then God must be mad. Or if something good happens, then we are blessed by the Lord. Now, of course, we're blessed by the Lord. God has certainly blessed us. But folks, good things and bad things are going to happen in our lives. And so sometimes we just simply misunderstand or misinterpret what we're doing in life and then that affects our prayer life. I'll just give you a couple of examples. So in the life of Job, you know, Job was an upright man. He was a blameless man. He was faithful unto God and yet he had some very difficult circumstances. Well, his wife misunderstood those circumstances. She even told Job to curse God and die. Job's friends misunderstood what God was up to. Their, their thought or their conclusion was, Job, you must have sinned. There's no way these things are happening if you did not sin. In the New Testament, when we read in John chapter 9 about the blind man, people misunderstood, misinterpreted the fact that he must have sinned if he's blind. They didn't understand that. The disciples didn't understand. Many times in their circumstances, they were in a boat in a storm, and they were crying out to Jesus, don't you care for us? We're going to perish. Over and over again, Jesus called them out and said, oh, ye of little faith, you don't understand. 
you don't, you're not interpreting these circumstances correctly. And so when we misunderstand the, the paths of our lives, the course of our life, we miss out on really truly hearing from God. So I do pray that um, we would confess sin, that we would be ready uh, to, to just be open unto God, uh, to let him uh, move us, to let him lead us in the way that we should go. So in Ezekiel, God's warning that prayer, that sin hinders prayer. And then the book of Daniel. Many of you know that Daniel was a faithful follower of God. He was a prayer warrior. The theme verse for Daniel is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 22. And it says this, God, he reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. There are several people that we read throughout the Bible that connected with God on a different level than others. Daniel certainly was one that we see who connected with God on a very, very deep level. In fact, that is the prayer theme. Revelation of hidden things through prayer. God speaking to Daniel and Daniel having such a connection that he was able to reveal dreams to Nebuchadnezzar and to others. He was able to, to get in touch, if you will, with God so deeply and so richly that his life just showed evidence of that deep connection with God. Now, let's not forget, Daniel was first to give credit to God in all things. In Daniel chapter 2, beginning with verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made, me, made known to me what we asked for, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Daniel was very close to the Lord. Daniel received deep things from the Lord, revelation from the Lord. I pray tonight that we would recognize that in order for us to uh, receive those deep things from the Lord, it's not just, it didn't just happen. You know, in Daniel's life, he was faithful. He was a serious, faithful follower unto the Lord. And so not only do we see uh, Daniel giving credit to the Lord, but Daniel also, uh, he surrounded himself with, with friends, if you will, um, the verse I just read kind of indicated that. I want to read also from Daniel chapter 2, verse 17 through 19. Daniel went into his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, He had these companions in that he shared, we have this, this dream, if you will, that we want to have God reveal it to us. And so these men, they prayed together. They sought the word of God so that they could reveal the truth. In verse 18, that they may seek mercies from God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was going to slay all the wise people because they were not able to reveal the dream that he had. Daniel was able to reveal the dream because he was faithful, because he was in touch with the Lord. And he had his faithful friends in which he asked, if you will, um, for counsel, for prayer, for wisdom, for guidance. And they were able to reveal the king's dream. I do pray that we, in our prayer time, in our prayer um our, our, our patterns of prayer would seek the Lord faithfully to, um, as the kids' song says, to dare to be 
a Daniel. Um, I remember as a kid growing up, we used to sing this song. I think there's different versions of it, but the version that I remember uh, is Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Dare to make it known. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command, honor them the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's band. Many mighty men are lost, daring not to stand, who for God had been a host by joining Daniel's band. Many giants, great and tall, stalking through the land, headlong to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band. Hold the gospel banner high, on to victory stand, Satan and his host defy and shout for Daniel's band. Daniel had a group of men, faithful followers, and their prayer life, their, their faithfulness unto God was very, very evident. Have you ever found yourself maybe being a little bit envious of people that you observe just connect with God, just have a have a insight, if you will, um, in their prayer life. Well, folks, that doesn't just happen overnight, and it, and it doesn't uh, come without work. In fact, tonight I do pray that we would think about these three things as we think about getting to the deep things of God, as Daniel did. Now, we may not be given the gift to reveal dreams. That's not what this is about. This is about being able to connect with God in prayer, in faithfulness. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. We want to understand, first of all, that Daniel put in the work when it came to his closeness with God. He prayed. Daniel was a man of prayer. We know about his praying three times a day. Even when he was told that if he prayed, he would be killed. He was faithful unto God first. So he put in the work. Secondly, as we talked about, he surrounded himself with faithful friends. Folks, it is important for you not to be a lone ranger Christian. I know it's weird today in these times of the coronavirus uh, that we're missing that connection in church. And, and that may happen uh, throughout this coronavirus, but it is one thing um, when, when there's a coronavirus versus when there's not. Unfortunately, there are many people who have neglected their time at church, their time with God's people. And that often costs a great cost when we lose that connection. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 22 says this, Without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. It's important that we put in the work. It's important that we surround ourselves with the people of God, faithful men and women of God to give counsel, faithful men and women of God to pray with, to counsel with, to make plans with unto the things of God. And then the last thing this, this evening that I'd like to think about is that in everything, no matter if it goes our way or not, and here's one of the things that I do believe that every believer needs to recognize, we need to trust God. We need to trust God even when things aren't going our way. Remember when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because of his prayer? In Daniel 6, 22, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Daniel trusted God. Daniel's prayer, Daniel's faithfulness, Daniel's work ethic, all of those things prior to him being thrown into the, Daniel, in, into the lion's den, gave him confidence in the Lord to trust the Lord. So even while Daniel was placed into the pit, if you will, he was able to trust the Lord. God, you're God in my life, whether these lions eat me or not. 
And I believe that's the case for all of us. A lot of times we are thrown into the fire. We are thrown into the, into the den. We are thrown um, life issues that I do pray in all of it that we trust God. When we do that, we're going to grow in our understanding of God. We're going to, to grow uh, in the purposes of God. And that's really what it's about as we pray unto the Lord to draw close to him. So tonight I do pray that these two themes, that we recognize that God warns us that sin hinders our prayer, and as we put in the work of prayer, that um, we too, I pray, get to experience the deep things of God as we draw close. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight, and God bless.